Hello and welcome to another edition of Live Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, we get geeky. You've been asking for a geeky. We're going to give you more geeky. And the way we're going to do that is by putting Sean on the show and me walking away. No, that's not true. But it should be. Now, today on the show, we're going to show you how to change your hard drive out of your computer for a new one. Now, that may sound not so geeky, but it's, it kind of is. You know, some people find this whole concept intimidating. They know that they can theoretically do it, but as soon as they start looking at the steps, they go, no, 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 I don't know so much. But you know what? It's, it's not so bad. Good. It's not okay. so bad, and we'll show you how. So we're going to take them through step by step. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much three steps. Are we going to talk about our new line of uh, Hawaiian shirts that are available at JCPenney? Uh, you can later. Okay. All right, let's take a break. Uh, see a message from our sponsor when we come back. Change your laptop hard drive the easy way, the Lab Rats way, today on Lab Rats. Well, you may want to ask yourself, you know, why would I change my hard drive? What's the reason for it? And there are many reasons why you would go to this geeky lengths to do this. Yes, there's, there's a couple of key ones, though. Um, the first one. one. First one. You're hearing a little ticking sound inside your notebook. Click, 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 yeah, click, oh, click. it's a bad noise. And it's a bad noise, and, and you know that your hard drive is on the way out of this world, and you want to get a new one in there before the, the dirty happens. That's because those clack clicking noises, the bearings starting to go on yeah. the hard drive itself, right, because it spins. Yeah, so the motor could be failing, the bearings could be failing, right? and maybe the, even the surface of the drive failing. So if you're starting to get a lot of weird little errors popping up, then this might be a, an okay. incentive to upgrade. Okay, good. The, number two? The number two and the reason that's probably uh, the nicer reason for most people is because your drive is running out of space. So. You know, when a lot of people got their hard drives, they weren't knowing they were going to be watching a lot of HD video on them. They didn't know they were going to have a music collection, you know, the size of the entire hard drive. People do this to me all the time. Yeah. What kind of computer should I get? And I'll tell them, or I'll help them, and they'll go, I should get the smaller hard drive. It's cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. No. I'm never going to use half a terabyte. Yes, yes you are. You always you know? will. Yeah. What was that old quote from Bill Gates about RAM? No one will ever need more than 256K or 640K. 640K. Of RAM, yeah. There we go. So Surprise. you'll always need more than you think. And, yeah. and this may be a couple of years down the road from when you got the, the notebook. So yeah. you're now maxing things out. Right. So you, now you want to get a, a drive in that's like 500 uh, gigabytes, a gigabyte when they become available. So terabyte. A terabyte, yeah, a terabyte. So you want more space. You always want more space. Right. So if you're always deleting stuff, before you put more stuff on. I need it's this. About time. I need you need this. On my, on my computer. Okay. All right. So, any other reasons? Yeah, th those are the two main ones. Kind of there's, there's always right? other reasons. Always, okay. All right. So, we need supplies. We need to go and get a new hard drive. What else do we need? Uh, well, there's, there's, you need the new hard drive. You need, uh, you don't 100% need this. So, first of all, there's, there's two ways we can do this. So, a lot of people will say, okay, I've had my hard drive in there for X amount of years. I just want to now just wipe the, the drive clean, reinstall Windows from scratch, install all my applications, just have a nice, fast, peppy system. Uh, some people don't want to go through that hassle. They just want their drive exactly as it was with more space on it. Yeah. So that everything is exactly the same. Applications are installed. All your documents are there. Yeah, you just want a carbon copy of what you already got, except more space, right? Right. Okay. So if you just want to wipe it out, you're not worried about what's on the hard drive right uh -huh. now, then just get the drive. Right. So. Now, if you want to put the new drive into exactly the state that your old one was in before you take it out, yeah. you need two other pieces to this equation. One of them is some sort of drive dock Ooh. or an external dri drive enclosure. Right. So yeah. what you're going to do is you're going to put the old drive, yeah. or you're going to leave the old drive in there first. Yeah. You're going to put the new drive that you're swapping to yeah. into here. One of so these. We've, we've got this Vantech uh, dock here yeah. that will take uh, either these little drives or if you flip this. Uh, this uh, slot down, you'll take, take the bigger desktop drive. size. Yeah. And, and by the way, this, this advice is good for also desktop computing swapping out too? Right, so we're going to talk specifically about installation process on notebooks, but yeah. the concepts we're about to show will fit with your desktop drive. Okay, desktop enough. is not as crucial because generally you have a few extra drive bays and some extra spaces to plug in a secondary drive, so you can use it as a C drive. Notebooks, you only have the one drive spot inside typically. Got it, okay. All right, All right so you get one of these guys, what do they cost? Uh, it'll cost from $30 if you get a cheapo one to $100 if you get one of the really rugged high-speed ones. This one right here is about 50 I believe. Right. So it's, it's, it's good for backup as well. I've so. had actually found enclosures for as little as $18 yeah. as well. I bet you they're pretty high quality as well. No, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. Okay. Never had a problem. There you go. Prices come down all the time. Okay, good. So, all right. that's, so that's one part of the equation. Yeah. You need something to dock your drive into. Yep. 
The second part, of, or the third part of the equation after the drive and the dock is some sort of software that you can use to back up. So I've got this uh, one bit of software here called a Cronus True Image HD. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a bootable CD that you can put into the, into the computer. And it'll boot in there and say, OK. It'll give you the option of stepping through and uh, copying everything from your hard drive on your notebook over to that and creating an identical copy, Ooh. All right? which is really nice. And you don't have to worry about it. It just does it all for you. Mac and PC? Uh, this one is, well, it's a bootable CD. So as long as uh, it can get past your Macintosh's uh, you know, EFI, that is a bit of an issue sometimes, um, being able to see the drives on there. It, it'll work with Windows for sure. Mm -hmm. And it probably will work with Linux as well. OK. I will, I'll verify that. Okay. Uh, on the Macintosh side of the equation, the one that I like to recommend is something called SuperDuper. And uh, it uh, allows you basically to copy the drive even while it's running, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, this one you did from the boot, uh, booting from the CD. This one you can just select the, the drive you want to copy from and the drive you want to copy to. Mm -hmm. And that'll be this drive right here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and away you go. Copy. It'll not only copy all the data from here, it'll also make this drive bootable. So it'll be larger, but it'll be pretty much an identical copy. So the reason you want to do this is because the goal is to just take this drive and swap. So when you plug this in, it will look to the computer like there's nothing different except a whole pile of extra hard drive space. Got it. Yeah. Right? Good. So that process will take you a while. So block off uh, a bunch of time. It'll take a few hours probably yeah. um, to, to back up from one to the other. Okay. But once you're done, though, you have a carbon copy of one to the next, right? You're having a carbon copy. Right. And then the concept afterwards is, is you swap them. And you can put the other one in the uh, the dock or your enclosure, yeah. and now you've got an external hard drive as well, if Ooh. you want it. Because then you can just wipe it clean and... Or you can wipe it clean and yeah. put some other stuff on there. Wow. All right. Fun. So there we go. So that's, uh, that's the sort of step-by-step -step of doing this. Mm -hmm. So we want to uh, find the hard drive now inside these things. And this is, I think, part of what's... Scary most people. Scary yeah. for most people. So there's uh, generally a hard drive. It's easily accessible in most... Uh, in most uh, PCs. Now this one right here is uh, on the an IBM ThinkPad. And uh, generally, it's uh, sitting here on, on one edge, or there may be a flap here yeah. on the back that you can unscrew and open it up, and the drive will yeah. be sitting If right you want to have fun with your mom, take your laptop and go, Mom, pop quiz, where's the hard drive on this computer? And hand it to her and go, just wait. Eh, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Bet you she won't be able to know. Probably well, maybe not. she will. Who knows? So on this one, it's a, it's a fairly easy removal. You remove the screw that uh, holds it in place right here, and then the whole thing Slides should up. just slide up, Whoop. and there's your drive. Cool. So, so you basically take the, uh, the screws that are holding this uh, thing in place, replace the drive, and then just put it back up. Now, one thing we should notice here is, let's just eject this one, is we've got two different types of drives here, and I don't know how well you can see this. So on the top, you've got uh, something called PADA, or Parallel ATA. And on the bottom, we've got SATA, which is serial ATA. Mm -hmm. So if it's got the pins, a bunch of little pins, it's PADA. Mm -hmm. If it's got uh, this edge connector, it's SATA. Mm -hmm. That's important when you're buying the drive because you want to make sure that it fits. Mm -hmm. So if I tried to take this one now and put it back into here, it wouldn't work. You, you have to get the exact same connector on there. So maybe take the drive out first and just check to see what you got before you go and buy the drive. Cool. It's important. The drives aren't that expensive, but you don't want to go through the hassle of a restocking fee. Absolutely. Okay, good. Okay, so that's, that's that. Now, right. the Mac, depending on which version you have, it's a little bit more involved. So I've got the MacBook Pro. Uh, my colleague Matt also has a MacBook Pro. And this is pre-unibody. So back in the day, you may remember in Lab Rats, I swapped the hard drive out on my MacBook, yes. the old white one. Yeah. And I did that and the RAM in about seven minutes. We had, a, we had a race, didn't we? Uh, well, yeah, I, you, you were won. I, I, I was trying to put the hard drive in while you were trying to distract me from it, doing Fair this. Yeah, well, that was the, the race. But So I managed to do it in about seven minutes. Yeah. This one's a bit more involved because it's not so simple. There's a lot of screws. So I'm going to show you the process here. So okay. first thing you got to do is you got to take the battery out. Right. Which is important. You want to take the battery out when you're doing this anyhow. Then you have to remove the cover over the RAM and then take out the RAM itself. Now there's a bunch of screws you have to take out. These two right here bolted down the, the whole body together. Then you go to the screws all around the outside. So there's about right. This is the scary part, here. isn't it? Yeah, this, this is not exactly very pleasant. So you've got to take all of those out, keep them in a safe place, flip it over. Uh-oh. <laughs> and now this is uh -oh. the scary part. You pull the keyboard connector off right here. The whole keyboard panel on the top. 
and it, it, it's going to crackle. It isn't crunches it? and yeah. crackles, and you've got this edge connector right here, which connects the keyboard. There, you have to disconnect that. Then over in the corner, this is where your hard drive. You've got an edge connector again that's yeah. glued down. You sort of loosen that up, unbolt a couple more screws, yeah. and uh, then you pull the whole thing out. And the last step right here is you've got these little pins around the outside of the drive. They, they sort of keep it in place. Okay. So you basically take those screws, those pins out, unscrew them, put them into the new hard drive, right. and, uh, and then reverse that whole process. So put it back in, put the edge connectors back together, and then put the screws back in. Uh -huh. So that whole process for me, uh, I've done this a few times now. I got that process down to about 10 minutes and 47 seconds. For your first time, budget a lot more time for that. Like you four days. Before. <laughs> Not quite that long, but budget yourself an hour because the last thing you want to be doing, especially with those edge connectors being fragile, is rushing through it and shearing them. Yeah, the so, way I was going to say, what's the, what's the pitfalls here? What could you do wrong? You could shear those cables. Uh, you might not have a keyboard anymore. Uh, when you go click and you pull it out, you could be, could you damage it there? Yeah. You, Bend the frame or something? If you really wrench on it, yes. yeah. So the, the whole idea with that keyboard panel, when you pull it out, is you rock it gently back and forth. It will let go eventually. And if you think that it's not coming out, don't force it. Okay. Um, you give it gentle pressure. Okay. So that's the problem. Is do this at your own risk right. um, and be very careful when you do You it. won't go to their house to fix the problem if they make a mistake? For the right cost. <laughs> okay, so, good. Anyways, right. that's the process. Now right. we've got the hard drive swapped from one to the other. Very good. So it's a relatively simple process. You just have to take step by step. Mm -hmm. you be careful and don't rush anything and don't use a sharp knife uh, or uh, fire. Right. You don't want to use the blowtorch or whatever. <laughs> be very careful. Now, I want to show you one product that actually can make the product or the process a little bit simpler, especially here's, here's one of the other reasons you may beer. want to. Yeah, beer. <laughs> beer will, will certainly be helpful. One of the reasons you may be thinking of upgrading your notebook hard drive is because you want to swap to uh, solid state drive, SSD. Right. So if you want to do that, then what you may want to look into is this little kit from a company called iMation. You remember iMation? Remember iMation, yeah. Super disks and uh, yeah. memory keys and all of that. Yeah. So now one of the things they're working in is uh, solid state drives. And this is a little enclosure here that you can get as a kit. It's an upgrade kit. So we're just going to open it up here. It's a little tab on the side. It's got the drive in here. Mm. Now you can just pull the drive or you can do the backup. Again, this, this one is actually what came with a Cronus. So you okay. can get a Cronus by itself, but it does come in this kit. Okay. Back your hard drive up onto this, take the SSD out. Now we've got a new 128 gigabyte SSD drive. Pull it out, pull the uh, old one out, pop it in, and uh, away you go. And now you've got a really nice, closable external Mwah. hard drive case. So, Very nice. There you go. Very exciting. All right, well, there you go. That's how to change your notebook hard drive. Uh, let's take a break and uh, hear a message from our sponsor. When we come back, we have a clip of the week plus picture time. That's after this. Well, as you know, we went to the Consumer Electronics Show recently to see all the latest consumer electronics in Las Vegas, and our uh, cohort, Andrew Moore Crispin, went hunting for uh, cool hard drives, and turns out he found one. This is, uh, he, did, he found a USB 3 hard drive. So uh, let's take a look at that clip of the week, and when we come back, your pictures on Picture Time. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. So the beauty of USB 3.0 products, backwards compatible with right. USB 2, plugs into any USB 2.0 port you've got anywhere. But when plugged into a USB 3.0 port, this sucker reads at 100 megabytes a second. So that, what does that really mean for someone who's, try, say, trying to transfer a movie, a gig in size, over their, over their network, or not over the network, sorry, but straight to the drive from their computer? What does that really mean? So this is three times faster than the USB 2.0 drive. Okay. So if it took you 10 minutes to copy a file onto a USB 2.0 drive, it'll take you three minutes with this. We love to see you use your camera and take pictures of yourself and your cats and your rats and your grandmas and all the rest of it and send it to us. So uh, people actually took that advice recently and sent us pictures. So we have, what, two this week? We have a couple more this week. Or, well, show us. All right. <laughs> so one is actually uh, a repeat uh, from a viewer. This is not a repeat photograph, but uh, a while back we got this from uh, our uh, viewer, David. David. Who is in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. He sent us a picture with his eyes replaced by iPod touches. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's a proper photograph of him with his uh, wife, Lynn. Awesome. They're not in Regina here. This is actually in uh, Ferenza, Italy. Oh, nice. I like the, the, the blue and the pink. Yes. Boy, girl, blue, pink. 
I guess cute. so. It's cute. It's a cute picture. You don't have to uh, color coordinate like that and, and show we don't. us what gender you are. We don't. No. no. All but, right. Uh, very nice. So, Next. <laughs> second of all, this is, uh, and I apologize for this one. This one got lost in my inbox for a while. This is uh, our viewer, Steve, mm -hmm. and he is showing off his rat catcher named mm. Zach. Nice. So there you go. Nice. Apologize for, uh, apologies for uh, not getting this oh. in sooner. I said it got lost in the inbox. That looks like a tough cat. It is a tough looking cat. That's a tough looking guy too. He's uh, gritting his teeth there. That's right. The two of them on the prowl. Okay, cool. There we go. All right. And that's it. That's it for uh, today. So sad when picture time is over. It makes me sad because I love the pictures. All right. All right. Don't forget, you can send your pictures and your comments and your feedback and even movies to us for showing on this television here. And <laughs> you can send it too. <laughs> He's losing it. Yes, um, I'm just trying to figure Don't out Don't distract your co-host with a, f a very bad foreign language impression at Feedback Lab Rats. Feedback, oh, no, I can't even get it straight myself. <laughs> Wrap it up. All right. Feedback All right. at labrats.tv. There you go. That's the one. All right. Um, you can get more information on the show, especially the step-by-step -step on our show notes at butterscotch.com and all kinds of other fun shows. We have more than 2,000 pieces of video on the site by now. In fact, probably approaching 2,500 by now by the time you see this episode. So go there right now, please. My name is Andy Walker, not you. He's Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Sean, come back. Are you ready? Is it, Jack is too thick. Is, is this one up? Get there? a new one. Get a button up. Yeah. I don't know. Wear whatever he wears. His is fine. This is for the Dutch Antilles. <laughs>